Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look at a very cool new feature of Dreamweaver CS4 called Spry Tooltips. Now if you've ever used any Spry widgets at all, you probably know that they're fairly easy to use and if you know a little bit of CSS or you know how to use the CSS editor in Dreamweaver, you can also edit them very easily. Now here is a very simple gallery. This gallery actually you can follow. I'm going to hop over to my website that's tutvid.com. This online photography thumbnail gallery in no time flat that tutorial will show you how to make this gallery that I have sitting right here now when I roll over these images notice I get this nice fade in tooltip and there's a little caption underneath each image which is highly uh, customizable it's a matter of just typing text and then there's also a link down here which just says ah ha 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 and again you can put anything you like inside of that tooltip that pops up so we're gonna take a look at how at how we can create those tooltips. Let's hop back over to Dreamweaver and get started. Well, here back in Dreamweaver, I just want to number one close my gallery.html. It's just an extra file I had to open. I also want to select the Spry Assets folder that I have. You might not have this, and I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm just letting you know what I'm doing. I'm just ignoring everything that's telling me that I'm going to destroy because I want to act as if I've never done this before. So, when you're working with the Spry tooltips, you want to select the object you want to apply the tooltip to, and you want to come up to your toolbar. You can see you've got common layout, yada, yada, yada. You want to choose Spry. Now, this toolbar may be over here on the right-hand side. I just moved it back to the position I'm used to working with it in. And the last icon is the Spry tooltip. So with this image selected, just hit Spry tooltip. And it doesn't really look like anything happened, but something did. If we scroll down, you can see we have this little div with a yellow background that says tooltip content goes here. Now, this tooltip is not at all what we want it to look like, so let's use some CSS to edit it. Now, it isn't the default state for a div right now. A default state for a div does not have a yellow background and all that. So we know that there's some sort of CSS styling this. So I'm going to look to my CSS styles panel, and lo and behold, that thing I got rid of before has come back, sprytooltip.css. The reason I got rid of it before is because I had customized the way my tooltips looked using CSS. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that right now. So if you're following along, you now have sprytooltip.css in your CSS styles panel. Click the little plus to the left of it, and we are looking for the tooltip content. So I'm going to select that and double click it. When I do that, the CSS rule definition dialog box pops up. The first thing I want to do is edit the way the type looks within this div. I'm going to choose Verdana for my font family. A font size of 0 0.8 and I'm going to type EM. Then I'm going to hit tab. It's a 0.8 M's. The font weight is going to be bold. The color is going to be pound D8 D8 D8. And I'm going to hit apply and you can see that our text color changes. Next up, background color. I do not want this bright yellow, so I'm just going to say 333. It's a very dark gray. You can see we now have a very dark gray. I'm going to go to block and text align. I'm going to set that to center. I hit apply, and you can see our text has a line center. And last but not least, box. I'm going to set the width to 250 pixels and the height to 270 pixels. You know what? Let's edit that width. Let's make that 240. And now I'm going to hit OK. And you can see that we've got this nice tooltip here. So what do we have left to do? Well, for this particular tooltip, we just need to add the larger version of the image. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to select this bit of text. I'm going to type Roboats on Lake. And I'm going to come over here to my Files panel, which I'm going to drag up so I can really see it. I'm going to go to my Images folder, my Gallery subfolder, and this is when I select this, I can see that this is gallery 1th for one thumb, so I know this is number one image that I need to drag in. So I'm going to drag it over, and you can see the little blinking divider coming up between the letters as I move this image icon above them. I want to move that all the way to the left of the text because I want this text to appear after my image. Now, I just let go of the image, and you can see that I've got the image tag accessibility attributes dialog box that pops up, basically prompting me for alternate text. If you're designing a site, I highly recommend you use alternate text for the sake of time. I'm just going to hit OK because I just spent all my time explaining what that was instead of typing in the alternate text. Now that we have our image in there, I want it to appear centered. 
and push this text down. Probably the easiest way for us to do this at this point um, is just add a nice little border around this image. I kind of took that into account when I created this div in the first place. So I, what I need to do is find some way to style this image. Now I don't want to have to come in here and apply a class style to this image. What I'm simply going to do is create a new CSS style that targets any images that are placed within any of our Sprite tooltips. So any Sprite tooltip you use that you place an image in will automatically get this CSS style that we're about to create. I'm going to show you how to do that. What we're going to do is right click on tooltip content and choose duplicate. Now by duplicating this we're simply going to leave this as dot tooltip content. So we're saying okay attack the tooltip content class and I want to switch the selector type to compound and I need to retype that now. So I'm going to say dot tooltip with a capital T uh, content with a capital C and actually tip now that I glance over to my CSS panel is a lowercase t so dot tooltip content space img so we're going to target the image tags within any element being styled by the tooltip content class that's how that little selector works so we're going to hit ok and uh, you can see that our image has blown up don't worry the reason that's happened is because we just duplicated that tooltip content class which if you recall the box remember we're telling whatever object is styled by this class to go to 240 wide by 270 high. I want to get rid of those options or those styles. I'm going to hit apply and our image returns to normal size. I can also come into block and unalign to center, background, get rid of the background color, and of course you can get rid of all the type stuff because it's just an image. Hit apply and it doesn't look like anything happened, but we just got rid of some extra code. Next we're going to go border. We're going to leave all these checked same for all. For top we're going to type solid. It's a solid border, not dash, not dots, nothing like that. The width is going to be 20 pixels. That's quite a wide border, I know. And then here we're going to type pound 333. Just the same color as the background. Now when I hit apply, you're going to see our image is pushed to the center, pushed down off the top, and automatically spaces out our text. And because it's just a border, the same color as the background, it appears that we've used some margins and other things like that. But in reality, we've simply just set a border to the whole thing. So we hit OK. And now we, all, we also have uh, a couple little options we can edit for the actual Spry tooltip. We can do that by selecting this little blue tab that wraps this div. When I select that and look to my properties panel, I can see, number one, I've got a trigger. What is the trigger? The trigger is that ID that gets assigned to your object. I don't know if I mentioned before, but anytime you apply a Spry tooltip to an object, it is assigned an ID. Now if I select this, you can see the ID is Spry Trigger 1. Note, when I select this trigger, pound Spry Trigger 1. It's targeting this thumbnail right here. Now if you want to give this a custom name, by all means, come in here, give it whatever name you want, select this guy, give it the ID you want. And there you go, you've just changed it. You can give it a custom name. I didn't spend the time to give it the custom name. Uh, you can do it this way, but if you want to be more organized, I personally prefer to just go in and give it an ID. Now I'm going to check off follow mouse because I want this thumbnail to follow the mouse because we're going to use oops, a fade effect here. You can see we've got effect blind and fade. I'm going to use a fade effect. It just fades it in and fades it out. And the reason I'm using follow mouse is it will help keep us from getting trapped by a little sort of glitch uh, in this spry tooltip. Anytime you use one of the effects, there is the possibility that the user rolls over the tooltip at just the wrong time and then when they roll back over the thumbnail the tooltip just doesn't really show up it sort of flashes and doesn't really show up well, as you play with this it'll happen to you and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about and basically the only way to fix it is reloading the page or just not using an effect at all so I'm going to select fade follow mouse and uh, we can hide it on mouse out if we like uh, I'm not going to right here though and I'm going to command or control s to save it and it's going to tell me okay you've got these CSS files can I copy these dependent files your pages need these guys so I'm going to say yes, not only the CSS, but the JavaScript that's going to make this thing work. So yes, absolutely, copy them. And we can see here on my files panel that if I reload my files panel or refresh it, I have this folder here called Spry Assets. That contains CSS file .js, which is a JavaScript file. Very nice. Now, hit F12. We're going to preview this guy in the browser. And when I roll over any of these images, nothing happens. When I roll over this one, rowboats on a lake. Nice, wonderful, beautiful tooltip. Now, there are a couple other things. Adding tooltips to the rest of these images is just as easy as adding them to this one. I'm not going to go through and do it to all of these for the sake of time. 
However, I will show you something. Let's go back over to Dreamweaver. I'm going to select this tooltip. Note how when we roll over that tooltip, I'll do it again, the image just stays right there by the mouse. We can actually use horizontal and vertical offsets to push this guy like out to the gray area if we want to. So let's take a look at how to do that. Come back to Dreamweaver and select this guy. And our horizontal and vertical offsets, when you push these numbers up, when you punch positive numbers in here, it pushes it to the right and it pushes it down. If you use negative numbers, it, if it's horizontal, it pushes it to the left. And if it's vertical, it pushes it up. So I want this guy to be pushed up a little bit. So I'm going to say negative 50. And horizontal offset, I'll give it a uh, horizontal offset of like negative 450. So it should appear somewhere out here in the gray area beside our gallery. I'm going to save this, Command or Control S, hit F12 to preview it in the browser. And you can see absolutely nothing happens. Let's close that and head back to Dreamweaver and see what it is that we did or didn't do. OK, let's try this again. Let's hit F12. And there we go. It appears out there. Basically, what happened was I just saved the file. I hadn't deselected these text fields. You just have to hit tab after you come out of these text fields, and it will apply those changes. If you don't do that, you don't really see a difference. And that's exactly what just happened to us there. So kind of like a little tip right off the back of my mistake. So that is how you create spry tooltips in Dreamweaver. You can apply these not only to images, you can apply them to text too. So go ahead, go crazy with these things. Try to apply them to everything uh, you know you can think of, and uh, you can really create some cool effects. So that's it for this one. I thank you very much for watching, and I hope you can put your newfound knowledge of spry tooltips to some good use. And uh, once again, please take the take a few minutes and just check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. And I thank you very much for watching.